Paladin. Hey there, everyone. So, a friend of mine, Chris, approached me a couple months ago and said, would you be interested in doing TEDx? And the idea was kind of compelling. I said, yeah, I, I, think, I, could, I think I could pull that off. So, as the months went by, he would approach me and say, okay, do you have any idea what you got planned for this speech? And I kind of avoided it. I had an art show. I had other things going on. I just got back from a trip. So he was like, you know, I know how you live. It's such a spontaneous, like, you know, uh, no structure kind of means of living. Why don't we do something mm, super spontaneous, really organic, you know, and you just kind of come out and like, just, just kind of freestyle something. I was like, yeah, yeah, fuck, you know what? I'm probably the best rambler that I know. <laughs> so, I kind of had somewhat of an idea what I wanted to do, but I woke up today at about nine o'clock, and I looked in the mirror and I was like, that was a fucking horrible idea. <laughs> So, this social experiment is not going to go quite as planned because on the cab ride over, I made some notes. <laughs> I will be cheating a little bit, but <clears throat> I'm going to try and do as much of it as, as I can from my heart. So, um, first of all, it was ironic that they asked me to talk about my art because the reality is, I hate talking about my art. I absolutely detest it. I've always felt like, you know, talking about my art is like religion. It's just kind of tacky. Whatever someone's connection with a piece of my art is kind of their own business. I can only take away from that by trying to justify it. And it almost is the same as defending it to me. So I don't get into it. Um, I, 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 the whole plan was, I guess, to come up and just talk a little bit more about um, the lifestyle itself. I thought that was a better idea, rather than getting into what I do, because I don't find it that, that interesting. Um, so I, I want to start with some of the misconceptions, first of all. And I think a lot of people have a certain outlook about how they perceive artists. and. Maybe it's, maybe it's stereotypical, but sometimes I feel like they look at me as like the starving, tormented, kind of sleep till noon guy. And I don't, I kind of resent some of those stereotypes because typically I am up and ready to face the day by 11 a.m. every single day. Uh, possibly starving, but only because I'm just hungry all the time. Uh, but seriously, what, when, it, when is lunch? When is lunch? Soon? Uh, tormented? Yeah, not really. Uh, I've always personally kind of thought the clients are the tormented ones. But, um, but again, uh, back to the social experiment, we uh, we kind of decided we were going to do a video. Um, the plan was for me to just orchestrate a piece as quick as I could. Uh, we had kind of decided on 24 hours. I got stuck in Iceland the other night, so uh, as it turns out, I only had about eight hours to compose it. And uh, this is basically what we did. Um, you can watch it kind of as, as I ramble. So back to uh, the artist profession itself. Um, we're definitely a, 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 a rare breed of people. We're, we're not normal. I will, uh, I will grant you that. Um, you know, new studies show that we are 25% more likely to develop 
uh, social disorders or mental disorders such as uh, manic depression, uh, what was the other one, bipolar, um, even be schizophrenic. And uh, I, I, I'm lucky enough to not really fall into that criteria. I just, I think I'm just cursed with like extreme weirdness. Um, they say roughly 90% of artists will go completely undiscovered, which, yeah, is, is a risk you take. Um, and let's, <laughs> let's face it, we are not necessarily synonymous with being super wealthy. So, yeah, it kind of leads me to a Bukowski quote that I, I don't know, it really stuck with me. I read this once and I was like, holy shit, this is tragic. He said, to create art means to live crazy alone forever. And I was like, wow, wow, that's, that's pretty harsh, Bukowski. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it kind of leads me to why would I choose that then? Why, you know, what, what are the, the pros and cons? And yeah, the, there's, there's some ups and downs, definitely. I, I deal with the struggles every day. Um, if I had to go through some of the negative uh, things, um, it would be just dealing with clients, uh, especially becoming friends with clients. You know, they'll ask their tradespeople, you know, to do stuff and never hesitate to pay the price. But, you know, because I'm super friendly in that, they have no problem at all asking me for a 90% discount. <laughs> So, so what, what are some of the perks? Well, yeah, it's, there's definitely some good ones. I, I don't have to get up every day and face traffic. Um, I'm basically my own boss. I, I have this like visual thing in my head where there's just this condescending boss that, you know, is a slightly higher pay grade and he's just belittling me all day. And I think that's kind of been my incentive to never go out and get a real job again. Um, I get to work with great people and, uh, and meet interesting people and travel. Uh, I get to see a little bit more boobs than the average person. <laughs> um, and, but, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch something start um, or, or be conceived from start to finish and just be proud about it. Um, and if I can inspire people in the meantime, that, that's a really, really great thing. So, that's, that's just kind of how I live my life. Um, it's really without structure. Um, I have a formula, but not really. I kind of make it up as I go, because I kind of feel like there's a real magic in that. Um, you know, I'll have deadlines and uh, I'll start working on projects, you know, a day or two before because there's something about just pulling something out of your ass that, I don't know, it's, because I find initial ideas are typically where you speak from the heart the most. Um, after trying to fine tune things too much, or, you know, as I sometimes um, call it, turd refurbishment, <laughs> uh, you start to kind of lose what that initial pebble in the pond was. And uh, that's that initial thing, that, that spark from the heart that uh, a lot of ideas go full circle and come back to that initial idea. So I don't question a lot of my ideas. I believe a lot in Manifest Destiny. Uh, if something I encounter in my life really kind of sparks some magic, I, I, don't, I don't question it, I really go with it, because I think it was meant to be, and I get a lot of my inspiration from that. A lot of my paintings, a lot of my concepts really just come from things I've encountered, and uh, yeah, I, I really, really trust in that. And it, I know it's a very unorthodox way to kind of live your life, but you know, it's, that's kind of how I do it. Uh, in terms of painting itself, I, you know, I don't really believe in talent. 
a ton. I, I believe in hard work. I believe in a lot of practice. Um, it took me for a long, long time. I, I still see myself progressing, which is good. If I didn't, I probably would have walked away a long time ago. But, you know, you get to a point one day where it just, it, it just works. Like, it's like you solve the matrix and, you know, your brush strokes have a lot of confidence in them and you just feel kind of secure. And then from there, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, finding your inspiration is the difficult part. I personally have a filter. You have to be really, really careful about what you let in and what to regurgitate because there's a lot of crappy influences out there that you subconsciously absorb and it can really get into your work. So um, that can be a crafty thing itself. Um, but yeah, no, eventually uh, you just, you start to find beauty in everything around you and uh, you just, you, you, you have faith in the manifest destiny of it. So the reality is last week I turned 40 and I think my biggest secret in being a successful artist and having the ideas I do is just to never really grow up internally. And I haven't because I'm honestly a 17 year old man or boy, I guess, trapped in a man's body. And how I live my life is pretty funny. I, it's basically almost like I project myself every day into the Seinfeld-like world. And it's just complete satire. And the irony is that I'm here in front of a live studio audience today talking about that. <laughs> but, but the whole point of this was to really utilize that there's nothing wrong with that, that you shouldn't have to apologize for having no structure and not, not growing up because there really is something beautiful about it and there's a lot to say. Um, you know, while a lot of people look at artistic types and they think, you know, um, they're probably on the pretentious side and, you know, have this like one directional way of thinking. I, I don't think I fall into that criteria at all. Um, you know, while people are out at these art shows, drinking wine and talking about these pretentious things, I'm probably somewhere, you know, playing with action figures in the tub with my Boston Terrier, uh, or in a cafe talking about stretch denim or all my favorite condiments. You know, I don't really like to talk about art. It's just, it, it's not that important to me. I, I think it's great, but um, again, it's, it's someone else's connection with um, how they feel about my art. So. Again, um, you know, just don't grow up. Don't grow up and uh, I think everybody needs to, to find that balance in their life. I know I have certain things that really kind of get me through the day and um, I have certain formulas and philosophies. Um, you know, one is you are what you eat. So I try and watch good movies, listen to good music, read good books. I try and surround myself with people, you know, that, that value creativity. Um, I think it's important to really uh, immerse yourself in non-materialistic rituals and, you know, really stay away from toxic people. And finally, I have a whole bunch of philosophies that basically I try and preach to myself every day. I'm gonna share four of them with you. The first one is, never mock people for, or no, sorry. <laughs> Always mock people for their ignorance. <laughs> mock people for their ignorance, but never their misfortune. Uh, make as many mistakes as you can, because those are the lessons you'll always retain. Uh, live your life like the camera's always rolling. And finally, 
If your life doesn't look that good on paper, just flip the page and paint a sunset. Thanks so much.